Your business is a monster, consuming your cash. Most people start a business with grand dreams of becoming a millionaire, a desire to be their own boss, not having to answer to anyone else, and to be able to grow that business over a relatively short amount of time. That's the dream, but the reality is often far different. Most entrepreneurs put growth before profits, meaning they're constantly chasing their tails, becoming stressed, and never really seeing any gain. We believe that if we just work a little harder, we'll achieve more growth, more money, but it never works that way. Half of all businesses fall into failure within the first five years of being established. That's a huge amount, enough to put you off starting your own business. The businesses that do survive are often struggling to stay afloat, fighting debt on a constant basis. If this is your business, it has turned into a monster. It is eating your cash, and it is causing you to become stressed, sucking the life right out of you. Putting profit before growth is a huge mistake. Focus on growing your business first. Mikhailovich tells a rather wonderful story about his own financial wake-up call. He was successful in selling on a computer forensic science investigation business and earned big money as a result. He spent it all within the first two years through bad spending decisions and poor investments. He then received his tax bill and panicked because he didn't have enough left over to pay it. He finally told his family, ashamed of himself and the position he was in. His nine-year-old daughter came into the room with her piggy bank and offered her savings. In that moment, Mikhailovich learned the real value of money and profit first was born. Did you know, Mike Mikhailovich now has a net worth of over $1 million. Chapter 2. There is plenty of time to focus on what comes next. Think about profits to get you off the ground. Most business owners focus on growth before profits because we're told that entrepreneurship is about successful growth first and foremost. That's not the case. We cannot do anything without money, and a business needs money to grow in the first place. Mikhailovich identified his own mistake. He understood how to grow a business and to do it fast, but he had no idea how to make it profitable. Whilst you should focus on growing a business before spending, you do still need capital to get things off the ground. Be sure to make careful decisions on spending. Within this, problems can occur out of nowhere. Sales might slow down and they might speed up, and when they do, your fees and expenses also go up. Business owners are constantly robbing Peter in order to pay Paul, chasing their tails and causing a circle of stress and worry. None of this results in profit. A financially healthy company is a result of a series of small daily financial wins, not one big moment. Profitability isn't an event, it's a habit. Mike Mikhailovich. The false idea is that growth is more important because there will come a point when the money coming into the business will create profit. The thing is, profit isn't something which happens at some point in the future. It should come on a daily basis. Mikhailovich reminds us of the saying, revenue is vanity, profit is sanity, and cash is king. That means it's your role to do your best to maximize the money, profits, coming into your business. And it has less to do with whether your business is growing at a fast rate or not. The trap most businesses fall into is living from check to check, and that results in a constant stage of worry and panic. When the bank balance looks good, they pay some bills, and then it's back to zero. They panic, and they do everything, anything, to create more revenue. It's a constant vicious cycle that never really brings spare cash or profit. This isn't efficient, and a business can't function when it's inefficient. Living from check to check isn't an efficient way to run a business. Build up a nest egg to make things more comfortable. Chapter 3. Accounting and entrepreneurship are two different things. Visits to the accountant can be frustrating for a business owner, and that's purely because the way accounts are viewed by accountants and the way they are viewed by an entrepreneur are two different things. Mikhailovich gives a good example of a visit to his accountant. His accountant was pleased and told him that he had made $15,000 in profits that year. Mikhailovich thought that was great and asked where the cash was. After all, he wanted to go out and celebrate this profit. His accountant then bumbled and told him this was the profit the business had made over the year, but it had probably already been spent in other areas, so there was no money to withdraw at that moment. This profit had covered expenses, and in that moment, he understood that accountants have a different idea of what profits are. What your accountant tells you about your profits can be different from the actual amount of cash you have to spend. Expenses eat into spare cash. Your true profits and the money that is made on paper, but is used to pay expenses, is never really true profit or spare cash. Understand the differences to ensure you don't slip up. Chapter 4. Apply Profit First's four main points in your business to increase the chances of success. The four main principles of Profit First came around due to Mikhailovich watching an infomercial on fitness. He found the analogy behind the program inspiring. This was around the fact if you have a smaller plate, you'll eat less, and therefore consume less calories, making it easier to lose weight. The same thinking can be used when considering Profit First, and they all link towards scientific human behavior patterns. Therefore, you should use smaller plates, use sequential serving methods, avoid temptation by removing it from sight, and have a routine in place. The four human behaviors which Profit First is based upon are use smaller plates, use sequential serving methods, avoid temptation, have a routine. The smaller plates point links to something called Parkinson's Law. This means that we use up what we are offered. If you have a deadline of a week, you'll likely take the entire week. On the other hand, if you have two days to finish it, you'll pull out all the stops and complete it during that time. Parkinson's Law tells us that when you have less of something, example, less time, you're more frugal with it. 
and you're also more creative with it. This is something you can utilize when it comes to money management. The sequential serving method links to another behavioral pattern called the primacy effect. This means we focus on the first things and avoid much focus on the items which appear later. For instance, we are told that sales, expenses equals profits. Our minds automatically focus on the first two words. Example, sales and expenses. And we forget about the profits. That's all wrong. Mikalowicz suggests we turn that on its head and think of profits before sales and expenses. Your new way of thinking is sales. Profit equals expenses. Focus your attention on expenses before you relax with your profits. Sales minus profit equals expenses. Removing temptation is surely a no-brainer. Remove money out of your sight and away from your easy access, and that way you won't dip into it for other means. The final point is the routine, which teaches you how to manage money better and avoid the panic mechanism. Did you know, Parkinson's law is based upon the work expands so as to fill the time available for its completion way of thinking. Chapter 5. To cover your business needs, set up different accounts for different purposes. Profit First hinges on having separate bank accounts with nicknames for different areas of your business. You should open five different bank accounts and give them set names, such as income, profit, owner's comp, tax, and OPEX. Open five bank accounts and name them as follows. Income, profit, owner's comp, tax, OPEX. You will move money into each account at a set time every month. More on that shortly. You will also use the OPEX account to pay bills, and you'll move money into your tax account to cover your tax bill when it arrives. The profit and tax accounts should be out of your reach, i.e. no temptation. It is important that every business owner understands the status or health of their business, whether good or bad. To do this, Profit First has an instant assessment sheet, which is included within the book, or can be downloaded from the author's website. This is an easy-to-follow assessment which requires your regular taxation information, profit information, and balance sheets for the last tax year. Do a regular health check on your business to find problems that you might be blissfully unaware of. The results of the instant assessment can often be a shock to entrepreneurs because they didn't really understand the status of their own business. They assumed they were profitable, but the truth of the matter is that they're not. If this is the case, the outcome is fine, and you know now your point towards building for the future. You can now make sensible decisions and place profits as your priority. We assume that multi-million dollar companies are turning big profits, but it's rare to find a true profitable business. Mike Mikalowicz. Chapter 6. Understand Allocation Percentages to Aim Towards Success when opening the five accounts we mentioned earlier, you need to know how much cash to transfer into each one. This is called your allocation percentages, and you will have two main types, your cap and your tap. Cap stands for current allocation percentage, and that is the point you're at currently, i.e. right now. Your tap is your target allocation percentage, i.e. the point you're aiming to reach over time. It's important to have this so you have a goal in mind. When allocating money for your accounts, cap stands for current allocation percentage, your current point. TAP is your target allocation percentage, what you're aiming towards. It's important to allocate your CAP and TAPs sensibly and realistically, and to take your time. Trying to reach your TAP too quickly will end in failure, and will simply mean that you run out of money one month and have to borrow it to pay back the next, even moving slowly is progress. Profit TAP. Do some homework and look for target amounts. Using other company information, your tax returns for the last few years, or opt for a number you know is achievable and suitable. Owner's Comp TAP. This is the salary you will pay yourself, because that's the whole point of having a business. Make sure the salary you pay is fair for your role. Again, do your research. Tax tap. This is unlikely to be 100% accurate, but it will be close. You can use your tax amounts from previous years, or you can simply go with the 35% business rate for the USA. If you're in another country, find that rate and use it. These numbers tell you how much to transfer and will help you reach your targets slowly. Always be realistic with the amount you allocate to each account. Underestimating means trouble later in the month. Chapter 7. Profit First Works When You Put It Into Place But Planning Is Vital When you decide to follow the Profit First route, you need to actually follow through. It's no good reading it and thinking, hey, that's a good idea, and then never making steps. You need to commit to the process. There are certain milestones to follow. On the first day, make sure you tell those who need to know what you're doing, i.e. your accountant. You should also set up the bank accounts we mentioned before and work out your cap and taps. Transfer the first amount into your accounts accordingly you've begun. During the first week, you should focus on cutting down on expenses and trying to increase the number of sales you make. Think about areas you can cut back on. Example, any membership fees you don't use, excess office space, recurring payments that are unnecessary. On the 10th and 25th of every month, you will make deposits into your separate accounts based on the percentages you arranged on your first day. You will also place the appropriate amount of cash into your tax and income accounts, as well as paying bills with your OPEX account. The good news? You'll also draw out your salary on these days. Draw your own salary out on the 10th and 25th of every month. On the first day of every quarter, you can take your first profit distribution check. This is when you get to see the fruits of your labor. Every quarter, you will take half of the profit account amount and leave the other half there. Your quarters should be January 1st to March 31st, 
April 1st to June 30th, July 1st to September 30th, October 1st to December 31st. Every year, you will need to do a quick check and ensure that you're moving toward your taps. If you're working profit first by the rules, you should be moving towards those goals. You might need to adjust your percentages, but that's fine. You will also pay your taxes at this time. And if you don't have enough, possible, then you will take the remaining amount from your profit account and adjust your tax taps for next year. Did you know, Mike Mikalowicz lost all his money and used profit first to build back up. Chapter 8. Waving goodbye to debt will set you free from money barriers. Another part of profit first is getting rid of debt, which is eating up precious cash from your business. Many businesses survive on credit, but this isn't real profit. And it's simply the old adage we mentioned before, robbing Peter to pay Paul. It's important to be honest about the amount of debt you have within your business and then put a plan in place to reduce it and then eventually eradicate it. Work to pay off your debt and give yourself total financial freedom. Mikalowicz suggests something called the debt freeze. This means you're going to stop racking up more debt and you're going to get rid of any debt that you have currently. This doesn't affect the business, but it may mean cutting back here and there and creating a leaner running machine. Look at your income for the last year, as well as any paperwork regarding debts you have, such as credit card statements, loans, etc. Go through each paper and mark out the entries with P, expense that brings a profit, R, expense that you can change for a cheaper option, U, unnecessary expenses. You should also mark down any expenses which are recurring across the year. Then add all expenses together to give you a round number, and then divide it by 12 to give you a monthly amount. Once you have this information, you can put together a plan which will allow you to cut back on expenses and find other options which don't cost as much. If you owe a large sum of cash to the bank, contact them and set up a payment plan. It's also a good idea to work on the smallest debt first. Get rid of that and then start chipping away at the larger debts. Did you know, investors look for company debt ratios between 0.3 to 0.6, with 0.4 or lower considered a safer investment. Chapter 9. Your business contains more cash than you know. You simply need to find it. Profit First teaches you that you have more cash within your business than you know, and that it just takes a little freeing up. For instance, you might have a bad client who regularly pays late. In that case, cast them aside, but don't burn bridges as you may need them later on. With that time, you can look towards giving more time to your good clients or connecting with clients who are likely to be more high quality for your business. Bad clients weigh your business down and cause loss of time and revenue. Concentrate on encouraging good clients instead. You should also never underestimate the power of planning. Put together a well-thought-out sales strategy and a marketing strategy to work alongside it. Plans help you to stay on track, overcome difficulties, and will bring you more cash over time. Within that, you're working smarter, but not necessarily harder. You're basically getting rid of any weight that has been holding you down, and therefore freeing up extra cash for the business. Learn how to work smarter rather than harder by planning things carefully and looking for areas which are draining your cash flow. Chapter 10. Set up extra bank accounts to organize your business cash. Once you find that profit first is really working for you, you'll notice that your stress levels are infinitely lower. You're actually making cash from your business, and you have control over your cash flow. In this case, you can try some extra techniques to push your profits to increased levels. Working on your business is about building systems, period. Mike Mikalowicz. Mikalowicz suggests that you could add extra accounts to your list to help you make better decisions and plan for the future. These are The Vault, a just-in-case account which needs rules for use attached to it. Stocking. This is for large purchases, example, equipment. Pass-through, for reimbursement of expenses, example, travel costs you get back. Materials, to purchase materials. Subcontractor, if you don't buy materials but you use a subcontractor, this account could be useful. Employee payroll, to pay your employees. Equipment, a savings account of sorts to pay for anything you need in the future, example, computers. Drip, to cover advance payments or retainer payments. Petty cash, for small items, example, lunch with clients. Prepayment. Cash to cover services over the year. Example, if you purchase insurance for six months. It's cheaper than paying for it every month. This would also be the recurring payments which come out of your cash flow. Sales tax. You will pay this to the government when you do your next tax returns, but it's held in this account to be safe. Always put aside your taxes in a separate account. This ensures you have enough to pay your tax bill at the end of the financial year.